Twelfth Night is a very fun show, and out of all of Shakespeare, I think that's the one that gets me the most um, excited because every version out of it that I've seen, I've laughed out loud. It wins me over every time. It's been a roller coaster, but like a good one, like the one you don't want to get off because it's been a great run. There's been a lot of people involved with this show. There are the painters, people sewing costumes, lighting, the set design, and then the actual construction of that design. We have amazing music by Michael Wheeler and UCC faculty. The collaboration we see in Twelfth Night is because of all these different little areas and all these little pieces that make up this incredible canvas that I'm really excited to share with people. Shakespeare's wonderful to perform because the language is, it's so much fun. 500 years ago, this was the key entertainment. You didn't go to cinemas and you didn't go to movies. You, this, you spent your day you did this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds more over, but you put your lord into a desperate assurance that she will none of him. And one thing more, that you never be so hardy as to come again in your lord's affairs unless it be to report his taking of this. Receive it so. She took no ring of me on none of it. Come, I think so what makes Shakespeare like the most interesting of any of the other theatrical genres that I've studied is that it is so endlessly able to be adapted into new places, new times. It always has meaning. The way our Twelfth Night is, it starts in the sort of Victorian world as we expect it to be, and then the world crashes apart for Viola and Sebastian. And so in that, the world crashes apart and goes into the sort of steampunk, sci-fi world a little bit. Shakespeare's play's Twelfth Night begins with the story of Viola and her twin brother Sebastian. Suddenly there's this storm that comes and destroys their ship, uh, separating the two twins. During the shipwreck, you know, they wash up on shore and we got Viola, the female, with uh, someone else from the ship talking, asking where she is and who's the ruler, and then out comes Duke Corsino. Viola, she's washed ashore thinking that her brother has drowned and she has to begin her life anew. The first time we see Olivia, she's out walking on the beach um, in remembrance of her brother and she stumbles across a Duke Orsino who has been trying to woo her. Upon washing on the shore, she uh, stumbles across this encounter between Duke Orsino and the lady he's in love with, Olivia. And she's all sad and I'm trying to win her, but it's not really working. Viola has kind of a dual identity. First and foremost, she is Viola, but she also adopts the um, facade of Cesario, a page uh, servant who works for the Duke Orsino. So we got Viola, who's dressed up as Cesario, because I guess I don't allow any girls in my court. Cesario goes to work for the Duke, and the Duke sends Cesario to woo Olivia for him. When Viola comes as Cesario, Duke Orsino is like, oh wow, this guy is like really cool and you know, he's my best friend now. And it makes for some uh, pretty funny interactions between the two, especially because she is dressed as a man at that point. Know him noble of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, and voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in the shape of nature, a gracious person. It's interesting because she has her own grief and then, and then we watch her grief uh, uh, juxtaposed against Olivia's grief, which is, is uh, carried on to a much larger degree. Her father died when she was younger and her brother has just died, so she is left in charge of all these servants and this whole house that she's supposed to take care of. So she's very overwhelmed. She's thrust into this world of being a lady of the house after her first her father dies and then her brother dies. She's really not quite ready for this full role of, of managing somebody like Malvolio. Malvolio is the steward of uh, the Lady Olivia. Malvolio has been the family servant since before her brother died. Malvolio feels that he needs to be doing his duty to his lady and in doing that he needs to be taking care of the trash and he regards <laughs> Sir Toby as the trash. Sir Toby is an alcoholic. Sub-intellectual. He's a wreck. Toby Belch is drunk uncle. They have a very antagonistic relationship. But also, someone who very clearly cares for Olivia, cares for his niece. Sir Toby and Mariah decide that it'd be a great idea to trick Malvolio into thinking that Olivia is in love with him. 
The trick itself is definitely Mariah's idea. She hatches the whole plot, hey, I can write just like Olivia, I can write a letter that looks like it comes from Olivia, and she does it really cleverly. In this letter they have commanded Malvolio to be ridiculous. He starts doing all these weird things that Malvolio believes Olivia has told him to do. To smile at her as big as he can. And she has no idea why he's doing that. To come in these disgusting yellow pants. Just messes with Malvolio's head. And that's pretty fantastic. We decided to set Twelfth Night in a steampunk. Steampunk. Steampunk style? Basically, steampunk um, kind of derived in this Victorian world. Uh, science fiction writers started doing this, this what if. What if we never discovered electricity? Uh, what if everything operated off of steam? Which is kind of taking the Victorian side, which at the beginning of the play, uh, Sebastian and Viola are traditionally Victorian, and, and they're taken into this crazy, zany whirlwind of a place where everything's just out of whack, which is a lot like the story Twelfth Night. A good story well told is timeless. My favorite line is, he will smile his face into more lines than is in the new map than the augmentation of the Indies. Art any more than a steward? If music be the fruit of love, play on. Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. I really, really like getting to tell him that. All those words are so delicious and crunchy, it's just so much fun to say. <laughs> she loves me, sure. The manner of his gait. When you um, put a show up on stage, you see what the play really is. It's not, it's not a bunch of words on the page. It's this experience.